The mining proletariat, the production of raw materials and fuel in England heavily relies on mining. Cornish mines employ many workers, but the work conditions lead to serious health issues and a shortened lifespan. Lead mines in the north of England share similar health hazards as Cornish mines, resulting in miners dying young. Coal and iron mines exploit child labor, with children working in harsh conditions and suffering from overexertion. The demanding labor in mines leads to stunted growth, deformities, and various diseases in workers. Coal miners age prematurely and become unfit for work in their 40s, with a life expectancy below average. Thin-seam coal mines have even harsher conditions, forcing workers to crawl and leading to further health problems. The profit-driven practices of mine owners contribute to the dangerous and unhealthy conditions in mines. Coal mining is the most dangerous occupation in Britain due to frequent explosions, gas poisoning, and collapses. Mine owners prioritize profits over safety, neglecting proper ventilation and maintenance, leading to preventable accidents. The lack of education and oversight in mining areas results in frequent cover-ups and injustice for the victims of mining accidents. Mining communities suffer from low education levels, poor morals, and the breakdown of family structures due to the harsh working conditions. Despite a law against women working in mines, it is often ignored, and women continue to suffer in these harsh conditions. Mine owners exploit workers through the truck system, cottage system, and direct cheating, including wage manipulation and unfair fines. The workers are often bound to their employers through exploitative contracts and face limited legal recourse due to the influence of mine owners on the local justice system. Coal miners faced exploitation and harsh working conditions, including dangerous gases, cave-ins, and unsafe equipment. The miners organized unions and went on strike in 1844, demanding better working conditions and fair treatment. The strike involved 40,000 miners and was supported by the broader working class in England. The Attorney General, W. P. Roberts, played a crucial role in organizing the strike and challenging legal injustices against the miners. The mine owners refused to negotiate with the union, leading to a prolonged and bitter struggle. Despite facing evictions, hardship, and negative media portrayals, the miners remained steadfast in their demands. The strike ultimately ended in defeat for the miners due to the importation of replacement workers and their lack of resources. The strike highlighted the miners' courage, intelligence, and resilience in the face of oppression and hardship. The miners' strike was ultimately unsuccessful, but it served as a catalyst for change. It awakened the miners' political consciousness and led them to join the Chartist movement. The strike's peaceful nature and accompanying activism drew public attention to the miners' plight. The government promised to address safety concerns in the mines following the strike and subsequent accidents. The Lancashire miners formed a new union and continued the fight for workers' rights. The labor movement's growing strength and determination challenged the bourgeoisie's power and foreshadow potential social upheaval. The bourgeoisie's blindness to the workers' legitimate grievances and their refusal to address the social issues make a peaceful resolution seem impossible. The author concludes that a violent revolution is the only solution to the deepening social conflict in England.